Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today, I want to continue on with a series about the best exercise strategies for each body part or, or each region of your body. So far, we covered the best training exercises and strategy for back as well as for pectoral or chest development. Today, the topic I want to cover is the best lower body training exercise strategy to maximize your gain depending on your body type because that's the main uh the main point the main focus of this series is that depending on your body type you will respond better to certain exercises now regardless of the movements you do if you train hard you will get some results from them but if you want to really optimize your growth and your progress then selecting the best exercises that fit your levers will be the ideal situation. Now, as we saw in previous videos, I, so I won't, I won't talk about this for 10 minutes because the other videos were into greater details. So you just have to go watch these videos on back and chest trading. The links are down below, right? Body type and the hypertrophy mechanism or strategy you will be using have the greatest influence on which exercises you need to do. So for example, people with longer limbs and a shorter torso will respond better to a strategy that will be different than those with a complete different makeup, like longer limbs and a short torso and short, tor and short torso, longer limbs. Or, or and short limbs, long torso will respond differently to exercises. For example, me, I have short limbs and a long torso. Uh, I don't respond to the same exercises as um, Stefan works for me, who has very long limbs and a short torso. Okay, so we will need completely different strategies. Another thing that will change which exercises will work best is the hypertrophy mechanism you'll be using. Are you using muscle damage and mTOR activation, which requires heavier loading and also loading the muscle fibers while they are being lengthened and stretched? And the more you stretch them, the more growth you trigger. So we'll talk about full range of motion where the muscles are under full tension, even at the end of the range of motion uh, when they're stretched. And also exercises where you can use more weight. Well, you, you will use different exercises than if you use metabolic factors like lactate accumulation, like going for that, for that nasty pump. You actually are better served with isolated movement where you can keep that muscle under tension. You don't need to fully stretch it. You just need to be able to target that one muscle. So both strategies will require completely different exercises. Well, these are the two main variables we're going to be looking at when it comes to selecting exercises. Now, the one thing I want to emphasize, and this is mostly talking about the muscle damage and mTOR activation mechanism. The muscle being stretched the most when you're doing an exercise, so stretch under load, of course, is the muscle being recruited the most. You can see here on the two different squat pictures on the right, the knee will travel forward a lot more and there will be more band at the knee, stretching that quadriceps a lot more than on the left. So by extension, the quadriceps will be stimulated more. If you look on the left, then it will be actually more loading on the lower back, on the glutes and on the hamstrings. So depending on what you're trying to target or depending on your body leverage, it will change. So for example, people with long legs, especially if they have a short tibia, well, their squatting form will look more like the picture on the left. Me, I have short legs, long tibias, and a short torso. I look like the picture on the right. So it's very easy for me to target my quadriceps when squatting. Whereas someone with longer legs, when he's squatting, they will tend to work more the posterior chain, and hitting those quads properly will be much harder because it's a matter of which exercise will be stretched under load the most. Now, if we look at the impact of body type on lower body training, people with longer limbs and a shorter torso will have a mechanical advantage when it comes to the hip hinge or the deadlift pattern. It will be much easier for them because they are built for that. They will also be more efficient at recruiting the posterior chain muscles. Uh, on the other end of the spectrum, of course, it will be much less efficient at squatting and at targeting quadriceps, especially on the squatting pattern, in which you will tend to rely mostly on the glutes, lower back, and some hamstrings, okay? So when you look at their muscle dominance, someone with longer limbs and a short torso, the easiest muscle or muscles 
to develop will be the glutes and lower back. I include the lower back in, in, in that category, not because it's a lower body muscle, but because it will be stimulated in all the big basic barbell movements when you're targeting the lower, the, the, the lower body. Second easiest will be the hamstrings. And the hardest to develop will be the quads and calves. Okay, so you they will likely need more isolated work for these two muscles. And the exercise strategy will be need to be modified to try to put a little bit more emphasis on, on the quadriceps. So using uh, different strategies to give to put the quads in a bigger, better mechanical uh, position. Now, if you look at the short limb individuals, of course, it will be the exact opposite. So they have a lot more facility squatting than deadlifting. Uh, I'm not saying that they will squat more weight than a deadlift, even though that can happen. Uh, for example, I'm training a, a world-class female powerlifter, and she squats 220 kilos, so that's 484 pounds, and she deadlifts 210 kilos, which is 462. So she's stronger on squat than deadlifting. It's rare, but it happens. I was the same way. I could back squat 600, and I could only deadlift 585 which is really bad for someone of my strength or the strength I had. But because of leverage's issue, I was really bad at deadlifting. And I needed a lot of assistance exercises to make that deadlift go up, but I needed to only squat and nothing else to make my squat go up. So short limbs, much easier to develop the quads, much harder to build the posterior chain. So if you look at the easiest to the hardest muscle, it's easiest for them to build the quads and calves. A lot of people with short legs don't even need to train calves at all. They own, and oftentimes they don't need assistance work or isolated work for quads. If they squat, they will grow their quads just fine. Second easiest will be hamstring. So they will need some isolated work for the hamstring and it's harder for them to develop the glutes and lower back. Now, even when I was squatting 600 from squatting 500, I literally had old man butt. I had zero glutes. I mean, I would need direct glute work like hip thrust like whatever like the, the rope pull through i'm i'm too old i'm just not gonna do that but if i wanted to optimize my physique i would need to do that absolutely so by the way uh i, I talk about proportion so for those of you who want to have an idea of what i'm talking about just screen capture uh this slide here i have all the measurements i'm not going to repeat all of them and explain them it's going to be super boring but we're basically looking at the ratio between your leg and your height and it's a percentage uh, and you can also look at the tibia to femur ratio just in case you have legs that are of average length because if you look at the strategy here short legs will be 40 to 43 percent of your height Long legs would be 47 to 51. So anything between 43 and 47 would be an average length. Which strategy you use will depend on the length of your tibia. A long tibia will, need, will mean you will use the short leg strategy. A longer tibia allows you to stay upright when squatting. And it also makes a deadlift a lot less. Uh, lot harder because you can't raise your hips as, as much because if you raise your hips the, the knees will travel forward and they will be uh, in the way of the bar uh, if you have a short tibia and a long femur then you will be in the long leg category so i'm just going to let you review those data if you want to figure out which type you are but honestly most people will be able to tell just by looking at themselves in the mirror now if we look at body type and exercises. So what I did here is I'm going to be looking at the four main lower body patterns you want to train in a program. You don't always have to train all of them, but it's certainly something that you want to train at, to some extent uh, in your training life. Uh, ideally, you have at least two of them in your workout. Okay, And then afterwards, next slide, I'm going to look at uh, assistance exercises. So if you look at the squat pattern, so that could be any squat variation, it could be a back squat, a front squat, a zercher squat, a dumbbell squat, goblet squat, lumberjack squat, any squatting pattern. People with long limbs will tend to do more of an NG squat. They will tend to squat with a lot of forward bend, bringing the hips back to use the posterior chain. Uh, it's much harder for them to keep an upright torso, especially on back loaded squat. So for example, for them using a front squat would be more effective for targeting the quads because it will force them or facilitate standing upright. If you have short limbs on a squat pattern, you're naturally built for squatting. So all squat variation will be pretty much equal. 
to target the quadriceps. So you can rotate through them. Personally, I, I prefer the back squat or the safety bar squat because I can load the most weight on them. And because I have short limbs, well, even a back loaded squat will not bring the posterior chain that much into the equation. So you have more freedom there. For the hinge pattern, okay, like a Romanian deadlift, like a deadlift, longer limbs individual are well suited for that pattern. They will have no trouble emphasizing the posterior chain in those movements. So they don't need to rely on special variation, any form of deadlifting, Romanian deadlift, deadlift from the floor, pin pose, it, it will all work pretty well. Now for the short limbed individuals, uh, they will tend to want to squat their deadlift, meaning that they will bring their hips down and push mostly with their quadriceps to deadlift the weight up. It will look more like a clean, uh, Olympic lifting clean, than, uh, than an actual hip inch. It mo it's more of a, a squatty deadlift. So for that reason, it's much harder for them to develop the posterior chain when deadlifting. So what they will need to use variants that forces them to use that posterior chain. We'll see that in the next slide. For the hip thrust, okay, the hip thrust, again, I'm not a huge fan of the hip thrust if you've been following me, but it's still a popular movement, especially on Instagram. And because I'm trying to get more followers and more subscribers, I need to include the hip thrust, right? Uh, well, for people with long limbs, the hip thrust is actually an effective exercise to target the glutes. It, it, it's mechanically speaking, they are well suited for it. But people with short limbs, the hip thrust actually is not a good exercise. They will always, always focus on quadriceps to compensate. They might get some, quad, some, some glutes activation at the very top of the movement if they focus on squeezing the glutes, but it will be mostly for them a, a quad exercise. So it's not something I use with short limbs individual. And because I have short limbs, and I never got good results. Every time I tried a hip thrust, it was always in my glutes. That's probably why I don't tend to use it much. For single leg movement, lunges, step squat, split squat, whatever, the long limb individual, they will have a natural tendency to rely on the glutes. Okay, so any type of lunges, split squat, whatever. So they need to make technical adjustment to properly focus on the quad, or in other words, to get a greater stretch of the quads than in the glutes so that they can actually get the quad stimulation they want. Now, also interesting to know that people with longer limbs, they tend to respond better to unilateral work when you work one limb at a time than people with shorter limbs. Now, people with shorter limbs will naturally want to rely on quadriceps when doing the, the, the any type of single leg work. If they want to use it to target the glutes, which they probably will because it will be the lagging muscle, they will need to make technical modification to force a greater stretch in the glutes than in the quadriceps. So if we look at what it can look from a, an exercise selection perspective, so for the squat pattern, if you have long limbs, I would recommend either front squat, uh, a, a back squat, or front squat with heels elevated, uh, if they go with a back squat with heels elevated, I would use a very narrow stance and only go down to around 90 degrees so that they will focus purely on quadriceps and not shift to the glutes. Uh, but I still prefer the front squat, which is, in my opinion, the best exercise to help long limb individual target those quads. And there is nothing wrong with elevating your heels if it gives you a better mechanical position. By elevating your heels, it will allow you to make the knee move more forward, stretching the quads more while staying upright. And people who are against, it's funny because I see lots of people talk, are against putting like weight plates under their heels, but they will be the first to quote Olympic lifters as great examples of squatting. You know what? Olympic lifters have a heel that is elevated. It's basically like they are squatting with five pound plates all the time. Okay, there's nothing wrong with that. And if you're a purist and you want to do L's and L's elevated front squat, just buy Olympic lifting shoes. Okay, that alone, if you have long legs, squatting with Olympic lifting shoes will help you target the quads better. If you have short limb, anything goes. Any type of squat will work pretty much equally. That's why I prefer to stick with movements that allow you to use the greatest weight so you can create a greater overload. For the hinge pattern, Long limbs, anything goes. In fact, with long limbed individuals, you might not even need to use a specific hip hinge movement. You might go with a Romanian deadlift, or, or but the actual deadlift probably doesn't need to be trained that much. 
because every lower body movement they do will tend to target mostly the posterior chain. For the short limbed individual, the one exercise I prefer is a Romanian deadlift with the back, uh, the, with the front of the feet elevated. That will actually f allows you to push your hips back further. And the further back you push your hips, the more you stretch your hamstrings and glutes and the less you bend the knee. So it allows you to shift the stretch, the, 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 the stimulus mostly on the posterior chain, which is what you want. You can also go with a Romanian deadlift with a, a, a resistance band around your waist, around your hips to focus on squeezing those glutes. So both would actually work pretty well. For the hip thrust, the hip thrust is effective for long limb individual, but it's not required unless you're an Instagram model and you really want to max out your glutes, okay? Actually, it, I don't see the hip thrust as a main movement at all. I really included it here because I could talk ill of the hip thrust. I mean, I know it's a popular movement because getting those big glutes is really popular, but we've never used to do them uh, 10 years ago and we were just as strong and just as athletic. Anyway, for short-limbed individuals, I would never use the hip thrust. If I really want to get an action like similar to it, I would focus on a back extension, a reverse cyber, or even a, a glute pull through. Uh, for single leg movements, if I have long limbs, I would shorten my steps. So the natural tendency of people with longer limbs would be to take a long steps because that will recruit the glutes more. So you go with a slightly shorter step than you're used to. I would actually go with a lunge and not a split squat. What is the difference to stretch that, that, that quadriceps? The angle will be closer to 45 or 60 degrees. So you get a greater stretch of the, of the quadriceps, allowing you to put more stimulus on that muscle. You could also go with Bulgarian split squat. Once again, not putting the feet too far forward. Also using backward lunges, which would tend to focus a bit less on the posterior chain. Uh, and I would also go with backward sled pull. I mean, you can take a sled, you, you, you hold on to straps attached to the, the sled, you go down into a half squat and you walk back in that position. Great way to target those squats, okay? Uh, especially the vastus medialis. If you have short limbs, you will tend to use shorter steps because you instinctively want to use more of your quadriceps. So go a bit longer than you are instinctively wanted to do. Also focus on split squats instead of lunges. So going straight down, maintaining that 90 degrees in the front leg, not trying to stretch by bringing the knee forward. Okay. I would also recommend probably single leg Romanian deadlift to allow you to increase recruitment of that hamstrings and glutes, which can be problematic. Can be the split squat with the front foot elevated. That will actually allow you to focus a bit more on the glute and hamstring by getting a greater stretch in those muscles. You can also use low handle prowler pushing. The higher your hips are compared to your shoulders, the more the glutes will do the work when pushing the prowler. So that would be a great exercise for them to build those glutes. Now, the most useful assistance exercises. If you have long limbs, it will be a hack squat. It will be a narrow stance leg press or so your feet together and low on the pad to put more emphasis, more stretch on the quadriceps. If I have narrow feet and they are low on the pad, the knees in a sense will be more forward in the bottom position compared to your, your, your toes, stretching that quads more. Leg extension will also be a valid movement for them because it might be the best way for them to target that quadriceps, which would be a pointless exercise with people uh, with short limbs, by the way. Short limbs, the best assistance exercises will be the leg curl because it's the best way for them to learn to recruit those hamstrings. Uh, leg press, but the feet wide and high on pad. Oftentimes with people with short legs, I put only the heel on the pad and go as wide as I can to focus more on hamstrings and glutes. The glute am raise, row pull through to allow you to focus more on those glutes and hamstrings. These will be the best assistance exercise strategy. The take home message is if you have short limbs, you don't need direct quad exercises. If you have long limbs, you need very little posterior chain exercise because your natural tendency will be to rely on those movements when you do your big lifts. So what it could look like, again, this is just for illustration purposes. This is not the TIB recommended lower body workout. It's just to show you how one possibility of how it could be organized. 
So uh, long limb individuals could go start with front squat, muscle damage exercise. So you go fairly low on reps, so you can go heavier. Lunges, eight to 10 reps per leg. Then you go with a hack squat, which was your first uh, assistance work, leg extension and standing calf raise because normally people with longer limbs, they will need calves exercise them, whereas the shorter limb individuals tend not to, to need them. Just like people with long limbs, they will tend to use to, to benefit from forearm work and people with short limbs, they rarely need forearm work. For short limb individuals, you go with back squat. Once again, you don't need, you, you respond well to pretty much every kind of squat. Just go with the one you can load the most or the most comfortable with. Romanian deadlift with the front of the feet elevated. Leg curl because you need direct work for the hamstrings. Or pull through because you need direct work for the glutes and the hip uh, truss just won't work for these individuals. And I would have back extension at the end. People with short limbs, they have a longer torso. So the lower back can, it actually needs to be stronger because if you lean forward, let's say on a deadlift or whatever, because your back is longer than people with short limbs, and you lean it forward, and that back needs to be stronger because the, the, the end of the move, the pivot, is much longer, so it increases the work the back, the lower back needs to produce. That's why, for example, Chinese Olympic lifters, they do tons and tons and tons of lower back work because they have a much longer torso than, let's say, Russian lifters who tend to have short torso and long limbs. People with short torso, they tend to have a back that is strong enough for their levers because it doesn't need to be as strong as people with the longer back. So these are my exercises strategy for lower body depending on your body type. See you next time.